So today's gonna be all about flight reviews, something that every pilot needs to do. We're gonna talk about me having to go through a flight review recently, what I look for in students to go through a flight review with them as an instructor, the legality behind it, what to do if you've been out of flying for a long time, all sorts of stuff. So let's jump into it. Here is the what's what about doing a flight review as a pilot. Welcome to the hangar everyone. My name is Chris Palmer. This is my airplane for my flight school here at Angle of Attack. We also do online ground school, basically a lot of flight training stuff. So we want to talk about flight reviews today because flight reviews are something that every pilot needs to go through. There are a few exceptions I'll talk about later, but every pilot needs to do a flight review essentially every two years and it's fairly simple, but if you've been out of flying for a while, it isn't as simple. So I'm gonna share with you my recent flight review, how it went, the good and the bad. I'm gonna share some other students that I have gone through with flight reviews recently, what I noticed through their process. And then just for you, the nuts and bolts of what is a flight review? How often do you have to do it? What do you have to log? How does all that look? So we're gonna go through that. I wanna keep this pretty brief, fairly quick, and just hit the points along the way. So. I'm gonna wander around here a little bit in the hangar, but then we're gonna sit down and go through those nuts and bolts. So recently I went through my own flight review and kind of like full circle weird, one of my former students did my flight review, Annalyn. It was interesting because I'm a proficient pilot. You know, I've been flying plenty, especially this summer. It's been a really busy summer. And I asked Annalyn to do it for me because I needed to do it. It consists of one hour of flight time and one hour of ground time minimum. I'll emphasize the minimum for now because we'll talk about that later. Now for a proficient pilot like myself, that can work, especially as an instructor. I really know the ground stuff very well. I know the flying pretty well. So it ended up being a really efficient flight for us. I basically went up, took her through the maneuver. She asked me to do a handful of things. And then something really funny happened in the end. We started doing power off 180s. Even though I fly the airplane a lot more than Annalyn does, she flies different airplanes. I couldn't power off 180 the airplane when I was doing my flight review, but she could and just a little bit of a humble pie. But I really have no ego in this. I just, you know, need to do my flight review open to learning, open to hearing things from her because even though I had trained her before, she has been out with many different people in her own situations and in her own flying and has her own real world experience now. So a great learning opportunity for me. So that was my flight review. But what if you aren't a proficient pilot like myself? You've been out of flying for a while. I remember I had a hiatus from flying about 10 years ago and I needed to get back into it. Interestingly enough, one of the first things you need to do is the flight review. So I went up and did a flight re review way back when with a local instructor to get back into it, just did as much as I needed to do. Ended up not being a ton, but it's still something that I had to do, you know, 10 years ago when I had a bit of a hiatus. So let's come over here. I'm gonna sit down at my desk and we're gonna go through the nuts and bolts of this really quick and just hit the points here. All right, sitting down here. So I'm gonna explain the ins and outs of this now in detail. This video is brought to you by AOPA Pilot Protection Services because if you were to screw this up, could get you in some hot water, it wouldn't be legally correct and they are there to help support you through things like this. Even if you have questions ahead of time, that's the best case scenario. Um, but you know, here's this video brought to you by them to give you these details so you don't have to do something like that. So as I said, a flight review has to be at least one hour of flying and one hour of ground. Now, you need to be very, very careful that you actually log that time in your logbook. It's not sufficient enough just to do the endorsement that is also required. So you're going to need three different things in your logbook from your instructor. You're going to need an entry for the flight time logged in there with their name signed and what you worked on. And you'll also need the ground time logged in your flight book as well. You'll see in the back of your logbook, I just call it a flight book, but in the back of your logbook, you'll see 
a section for ground. This is an underutilized place for flight instructors. It's even something I'm trying to get better at is logging the ground back there. And this is where you need to log that you had actually done the ground instruction portion of the training. Then you are going to have the endorsement, which is also sometimes in the back of your logbook. Now, if you've been a pilot for a while, you're going to notice that you'll run through those flight reviews fairly quickly in your logbook and you'll run out of room because if you're a pilot for 10 years and you know, you're doing it every two years, you only have four of those entries, you're not going to have enough room. So eventually your instructor may have to print something off to then put in your logbook or some other method that you choose. Now, this brings up the point of an electronic flight bag and whether or not that is a legal replacement for the paper logbook, and of course it is. You just need to be able to log it. So in my case, I use Garmin Pilot. They have a logbook function. You can do an entry for the flying, for the ground, and also for the endorsement. All that can be in your electronic logbook and provable to the FAA if they were to ever come do say like a ramp check or something. This just makes sure that you are completely legal, completely straight, everything is good to go. Now if you wanna look up this regulation, it is 6156, which is in the FARS, and it goes through this in detail. So you can kinda of see what I'm talking about if you go and want to read the legalese. Now again, one hour flying, one hour ground, but there is an exception. You can do a practical test. So say that you had just gotten your private pilot a year ago and since then you're about to take an instrument check ride that would count that would reset the clock on your flight review so those are things that can kind of take over that which is kind of cool i have a friend i actually just did a commercial rating for him and his goal has always been to never do a flight review to always just add something onto his rating in order to keep going so he did his private his instrument and we just did his commercial at one time he had also done his seaplane add-on so you can make it fun do different things and just keep going keep learning keep growing i thought that was a good mantra of his there's also one other misnomer i want to get out of the way okay because those of you that have been around the block a few times i know this is how it started for me we used to call the flight review a biennial flight review bfr so commonly people refer to to the flight review as a BFR, but it is no longer a BFR. It is simply a flight review. So just keep that in mind. Just one of those little tiny things that has changed over the last few years. And we wanna be calling it a flight review so we know exactly what we're talking about. And then one more time, just so we have clarity, this is due every 24 calendar months. If you did your flight review, say on the fifth of the month, then it would be due 24 months later on the last day of that month that you had taken that review. So say you did it on the 5th of April, you'd need to be due on the 30th of April in two years. There is an airplane outside doing a run up. You guys can probably hear that. We are at an airport. Now let's talk a little bit about what you would do in a flight review. I think people think it's like a check ride. It really isn't meant to be a check ride even though it can kind of be structured as a check ride. I think the best way to do a flight review is to tailor it to the student or to yourself. So if you are going into a flight review, you're a proficient pilot, even a non-proficient pilot, it's really helpful if you come to the flight review armed with things that you know you are apprehensive about or that you want to work on, things that you want to polish up on, just those big questions in your mind. What the instructor is going to look at through your flight review is essentially that you are safe that with the skills that you once had or once knew or that you currently have if you're a current pilot that you are going to be safe enough to operate the aircraft that you aren't going to go bust airspace and things like that so i go through a pave checklist when i do the flight review itself which is largely what a check ride is anyway taking people through their qualifications, limitations, things that they need to fly the airplane, what the airplane needs for maintenance, all the sort of operation stuff that is required. Then we're going to get into cross-country flight planning and anything there with airspace, performance, weather that the student has questions on. Now, invariably, one thing it seems that I've been adding a lot to flight reviews is going over electronic flight bags with people using Garmin Pilot and, and just showing them, hey, here is how you go through the process of gathering all this data that we have now and making it easier on yourself. I know that that is one area a lot of pilots that have 
been around for many years are still lacking in. So I give them the opportunity to ask me any questions about it and how it can help them in their flying. I find that that is something that we end up spending a lot of time on when we do the flight review. Now again, if you are not a proficient pilot, you need to count on taking longer than the hour of flying an hour of ground, which is the minimum that you are required to do. Now, do I as a proficient pilot need an hour of ground and an hour of flying? Probably not, but legally I do. Does someone that's been out of flying for five to 10 years need a flight review? Absolutely. Do they need more than one hour of flying, one hour of ground? Absolutely. So really it's just as much as the instructor thinks you need in order to do it. Just don't view it as a formality if you have been out of flying for a while or if you're rusty. It's something you're going to have to do more of in order to be proficient. That's just how it is. It's the safe thing to do and it's an opportunity for you to fly with the instructor and get it done and be in a safe environment. Now, I wanna point out something that I think we as new pilots, when we first become a pilot, or as we're going along, fail to realize. And that is that an instructor is there for you guys, regardless of whether you're working on a rating or not. If you want someone to be there to help you, just to go fly a certain cross country or go into a new airstrip, or go work on your maneuvers again, or go work on some different types of landings again. If you're feeling apprehensive or rusty, or you just want someone to be there to help you a little bit, you don't have to work on a rating, and that could be super nice. So say that you are barely flying, and you have been a year since, say, a check ride, but you've barely been flying, and you say, hey, like it's not super safe for me to just go out and fly because I haven't been flying. Well, hey, that's inside the two years. Technically, you're legal to do so, but you might want to take a flight instructor along with you. Would that be a total of one hour of ground and one hour of flying and they could then sign you off on your flight review? That's possible, but I just want to point out that remaining proficient versus just remaining legal is a very important thing because you know obviously we want to remain legal that's the baseline but it doesn't necessarily mean that we are proficient as pilots so we definitely need to think about doing more with instructors when we feel like we need it so based on where you're at in the process you're going to have maybe a very proficient pilot you're going to have someone that is kind of in between maybe you fly seldomly and then someone that's been out of flying for a while and hasn't really you know kept up with even the mental gymnastics of what it takes to recognize airspace or do performance calculations or weight and balance or learn how to use an efb and all these different things that go into being a pilot at those different levels be honest with yourself where you're at and how much preparation you're going to put into the flight review and then look ahead with your instructor that you choose for your flight review and ask them what they are going to require so that you can freshen up. Don't expect this to be a check ride. It's not a pass fail event. It's just get up to snuff event and to the point where you are safe and your instructor will determine that. Sometimes it is more of a formality. Again, if you are very proficient and other times you will need more hours than the bare minimum. Now, without naming names, I have had some friends of mine that have caught themselves flying outside of the flight review. I don't think that this was done intentionally at all. This was just something that slipped by them and they realized, hey, I've been flying outside my flight review, need to be super careful about that, or you know, he even got caught kind of, hey, I'm outside of it. As an instructor that is also a friend, I'm inquisitive and ask questions about that. Hey, when's your flight review due? And oftentimes I'll look it up. Oh man, I'm outside my flight review. What have I done? So that is where something like pilot protection services comes in. If you guys have questions about the, the ramifications of that, you know, it, it would be a little bit tricky in terms of the ramifications. You don't necessarily need to go self-report to the FAA. All in all, you want to just make sure that you're constantly staying legal. And if you were ever to get in any sort of hot water with the FAA because you were caught flying outside of a flight review, which I definitely do not suggest, be very careful not to break the rules. But if you were ever in a position like that where somehow you lapsed by a few days, then they could be there to help. So pilot protection services, they, man, just again and again and again, every time I think of these topics that have to do with regulations or proficiency or keeping an airplane flying, time and time again, it just 
dawns on me that it's great to have the protection of legal services from them and just someone to call if you have questions it's really helpful you can get on the phone with an aviation lawyer almost immediately if not within a few days if they're very busy but you can get advice right away again always better to do ahead of time always better to stay very proficient i am definitely not advocating flying over a flight review please don't see it as that i do not want you to do that but if you were ever to get into hot water with any of these legal issues, then Pilot Protection Services would be there to help you out. Medical issues, which we've talked about in other videos, you know, my medical story and, and what I go through with it. And then also this proficiency stuff, airplane stuff. I've been trying to go through more of these regulatory slash, you know, FARs that are kind of gotchas to make sure that you guys know what you need to know in order to make it work. That is the long and short of it. That is a flight review. If you are not a proficient pilot, make sure that you become proficient before you go start. Get the help of a flight instructor. Don't expect to do just the bare minimum. If you are a proficient pilot, go in with a humble attitude and fly with another instructor. Maybe someone you know is way better than you are and, and really you know up your game. So that is the long and short of flight reviews. Thanks for coming along. Hope you guys learned a few things and that you are energized and encouraged to do it the right way. So thanks for being here. Fly safe, fly legally, and until next time, throttle on.